and they moved to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my brother, which one is it? South Dakota, I want to say. He's one of the Dakotas. That's mad. Right, that's such a random place to move. I don't know. Okay, so let's really want to be like, oh, we got to we are moving on to another section. Um, so this is going to be called implicit differentiation. Now, it's definitely something you would have to know. It is something that always comes on a final. That being said, I usually only see it in like one problem on the entire final. But if you want to say, you know, you can't get more than three wrong, nothing is off the table. Right? We have learned everything well. So, um, implicit differentiation is, again, it's regular differentiation. All the rules that we've talked about for differentiation still apply here. It's just we're applying it in a different context when our function is what we call implicitly defined. So let me talk about what that means. I don't know if this is going to be a definition, more of an explanation. Um, there are two main ways to define a function. You can think of functions as being defined in two main ways. Um, the first way is the way we've always kind of been looking at it this whole time, probably your whole life. It's called explicitly. No. So when we define a function explicitly, that means we write it in like that. We write, okay, there's y, which is a function of x, so there's some rule over here with x's, and we have the independent variable, and your y is separated. Your y is isolated on one side of the equation. It's by itself. It's out in the open. It's explicit. So, and this is, again, regular function, so y equals x squared, y equals radical x, or y equals a half, or you can say y equals x plus 1 over x minus 3, etc. Right? The, the, normally, the normal way you usually think about functions, where the y is on one side, and on the other side you have some rule that has x's in it. Okay? So that, that's called the explicit way to define a function. However, there are other ways to actually define a function. And then there's called the implicit way. Now, basically, the implicit way means you talk, of, you define the equation of a function kind of like this. There's some rule that has x's and y's in the rule, so the x's and y's are mixed up. You don't have that y isolated. So you could see like that, or like. that or anything like that. So kind of when you have your x's and y's kind of jumbled together. So this is when you have some equation and you understand that you're, you want to think about it as a function, you want to look at what its graph looks like, you want to do calculus with this function, but it's not very nice. It's like the y isn't isolated, right? So it turns out that you can't really just, and if you want to do calculus, you can't really just apply the derivative rules in the same way you applied them before because your x's and y's are mixed up, okay? So the question is, how do we actually find the derivative in a situation like this? Like if I told you this equation and asked you, find the derivative, find the slope of the tangent line, how, do you, how would you actually go about doing it? And so, that's what this section is about. We'd like to do calculus in this case. And like I said, um, you're, you're only going to see one example like this. It's going to be a very straightforward cut and dry. But knowing how to do calculus in this situation is actually super important because usually in the real world or in real life, right, if you're not in a math class, Usually when someone figures out a function that describes some natural phenomena or a relationship, it normally comes to you ugly, like 
like this, right? Very rarely in nature are you going to see a function pop up like that. Usually it's just like you have so many things to keep your eye on and when you kind of force a relationship out of it, it's a very complicated relationship where the, all the variables are mixed up. But you still want to be able to do calculus. You still want to talk about rate of change, how fast is this thing moving, etc. And so once you want to differentiate something in this case, when your x's and y's are mixed together, that's called implicit differentiation because you're differentiating it an implicitly defined function. And the trick, quote unquote, not really a trick here, is to use the chain rule. So that chain rule is the super important rule. So let, let me actually just kind of illustrate to you guys how that would look to use the chain rule. And like I was saying, that problem we were doing with the, we had the function h of x and j of x and k of x, that's going to come in handy to kind of illustrate the point here. So there are two ways to define a function, explicitly and implicitly. Explicitly is the way we've always been defining it, and you can find errors there by using what we've already done. Um, but when your x's and y's are mixed up, jumbled together, you can't isolate the y. You need something else. So let's just do some illustrative examples here. Suppose I ask you, suppose y represents some function f of x. Okay, so I'm thinking of some function f of x, but and so now I'm going to ask you, how would you differentiate x? versus how would you differentiate something like x times f of x? How would you differentiate um, something like x squared times f of x squared? Or how would you differentiate something like x divided by f of x? over here, how would you differentiate the square root of f of x? Okay. So I'm not telling you what the f of x is, I'm just telling you some expressions that have the f of x in it, and I want you to find the derivative of these expressions. Okay. So it's kind of like the symbolic derivative from the problems we were looking at in the last, last session. Last class. Okay. So. I'll do the first one, it's the easiest one. Okay, you guys can follow me lead. Okay, how would I differentiate f of x? I don't know what f of x is, so I'm just gonna call that f prime. Okay, there's nothing. What else can I say, right? Okay, it's just the derivative of it is the derivative, okay. However, there is a little bit more I can say in this situation. How do you differentiate that? not the chain rule. Well, kind of, yeah, if you think of this as the inside function, but that's the second thing you should see. It's first the product rule, okay? So we want to differentiate one function times another function. So overall, looking at this globally, it's the product rule. I need to differentiate one at a time. Now, of course, if I'm differentiating this inside function, I can think of it as the chain rule, although it's not really necessary here because the, the power is one. But, uh, yeah, so if I wanted to use the product rule here, how would I do it? So I differentiate the x, leave this alone, derivative of x is? One. 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 And then I would leave that alone. Plus, now I put the x back, leave the x, and differentiate this. What's the derivative of that? Just f prime. Right? Okay, now, what about this situation? What rule would you use here? Huh? So you have to differentiate this thing. First you realize that there are two functions. 
So you need a product rule. Yeah. So you're going to differentiate this, leave that alone, differentiate this, leave that alone. Then you realize when I'm differentiating this, I need the chain rule because there's an insect. But the product rule is the first thing. So what, what does that mean? So it would be x squared. x squared times the derivative of this. Yeah. Which then is? Be f part of the x So notice that even though I don't know what this function is, I kind of know how to differentiate an expression involving that function. I had to apply the chain rule. I thought of my f of x, it's just some function. I don't know what that function is, but it's an inside function here. So I differentiate around it, multiply by the derivative of the inside. Right? So that's the first part. Still remember that if we're doing the product rule. So plus, now I'm going to differentiate the x squared, which is 2x, and leave the second part. So I'm doing the product rule in general. Overall, I'm doing the product rule. But to differentiate this function that I don't know how to talk about its definition, I use the chain rule. OK, so that's that situation. What about this one? How do you differentiate that? So the quotient rule? Quotient rule. OK, so, so I'm going to think of this as this is some f, f that some g. g. And so the rule is, is f prime you take the, well, I'm calling this f, that's very weird. Um, let's, let's use, because I actually use the f. So let's say we thought of the product rule in terms of, say, u and v. So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top bottom minus top time derivative bottom over the bottom squared. So this is like the u and the v. So what I'm going to do is I want to find u prime times v minus u times v prime over v squared. That's the quotient. Okay, so now let's plug those in. What are what am I what is u prime? It's one. It's one times v just f minus U, x, which is x times, times v squared, f prime, f prime of x prime over, v over f of x squared. Of x squared. What about this okay. situation? It's going to be f of x to the half. Okay, this is the derivative of f of x to the half. How do you differentiate that? Uh, so that's going to be um, 1 half uh, f of x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 f right, of x. 1 over 2 radical x. f of x. Right. So we know that derivative of radical x is 1 over 2 radical x, so it's 1 over 2 radical x f of x, and then 1. You're actually not done. Because your f of x here is an inside function. So you have to multiply by the derivative. And again, that's chain rule. You have to remember your f of x isn't just x. Right? There's a whole function. I just I don't really know what it is, or I don't know how to express this function. But it, it doesn't matter. I can go through and I can apply my derivative rules anyway. And I just know whenever I'm differentiating some function other than x, I apply the chain rule while differentiating that function. Okay, okay. so hopefully remember the lesson that we learned here. All we're going to do now is change the notation slightly. I'm, we're going to redo these problems, except instead of f of x, I'm going to write y instead. So in other words, I can ask you, how would you differentiate y? Or how would you differentiate x times y? Or how would you differentiate x squared, y squared? 
how would you differentiate x divided by y? Or how would you differentiate the square root of y? Okay. Now, your y is just representing some function. There's some inside function that we don't really know what it is. But similarly, this is how I wanted to differentiate f. Was f prime? The derivative of y is y prime. What would the derivative of this be? One. One times times one. Times. Y. Y. One no. times. Don't forget the rules. One like you immediately one. forgot the product rule. The product rule applied here. It's going to apply here. The product rule always applies. So y plus so one, right? plus This is a function, right? I have one function multiplied by another function, and I want to take the derivative. 1 times x plus. It's product rule. So it means I differentiate this, leave that, plus differentiate this, leave that. So derivative of x is? 1 times, times y plus Times what? One. One. Times on y prime. Times y prime. Okay, Jonathan is seeing it. Are you guys try to see it? Finally. Exactly the same situation. There's no difference between these two. My y is f of x. Everywhere you see an f prime here, there should be a y prime replacing it. Everywhere you see a y here, there should be. Everywhere you see an f, there should be a y. Everywhere you see an f prime, there should be a y prime. How do you do this? So it would be 2. Yeah, just go, go. 2x two, two two times the y of squared mm -hmm. plus x squared times y prime. No, y squared. No, no. 2y prime. 2y? Times two y plus. Why are you plusing? I was gonna do it. The, the y. I have to. Remember how you're thinking of it. The y is an inside function. How would you different? You'd have to multiply by the prime. Times. Times. Oh, just do y. Chain rule. Okay. Right. Every you see a y, you're thinking of it as there's some inside function. There's a function there that I don't know what it is, right? The y is just representing some other function. So when I see this, x squared times y squared, that's just one function times another function. I need the product rule. So differentiate this, leave that alone, plus leave this alone, differentiate that. Now when I'm differentiating that, I need to realize I need the chain rule here. Because this isn't just some variable squared, it's a whole function squared. There's an inside function. So I differentiate around it, which gives me 2y, and then I have to multiply by y prime because it's an inside function. Similarly, um, let's just do a, another example right on top below this one. If you were to ask me how would you differentiate, maybe a little bit clearer, x squared times y cubed. So me seeing that, I'm going to realize, oh, there are two functions being multiplied. How do I differentiate that product rule? I'm going to differentiate the first one, leave the second one alone. Plus, I'm going to leave the first one and differentiate the second one. Now, when I look at the second one, there is no x. It's not an x, right? Which means it's something else other than just an x, which means the chain rule applies, which means I'm thinking of it as something cubed. So what do you do? You differentiate the outer function, 3y squared, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Right? Can I try another one? Okay, what is this one? Um, so it will be 1 times y minus x times 1 over y squared. What is the derivative of y? Yeah, she's doing the question. Uh, derivative of y is 1. Derivative of y is uh, not 1. Oh, it's, it's y, y prime. Y is not x, right? 
y means a function. So you, uh, so me asking you the derivative of y is me like asking you the derivative of some function. You don't know it's one. You don't know what it is. Right? If it's x, it's one. But if it's not x, it could be whatever. What if I told you that the y really represented x cubed minus seven? Then one wouldn't be the answer. Right? The answer would be whatever the derivative of x cubed minus seven is over y squared. Same thing with this guy. I would think of this as y to the 1 half. The derivative of that is going to be 1 half y to the minus 1 half times y prime. probably a notational issue here, so let me talk about that. When you use the notation d dx of something, what does that actually mean? Okay, so I like to say d dx of some function. What does the d dx mean? It's the, the change in the y change over the change in the change. Well, no, dy dx is the change of y. The Just the d dx part. So remember, you can think of the um, the derivative notation kind of like a fraction. So you can think of it as dy dx, but you can also like factor off the y. Right? So when you read this, you think the derivative of y with respect to x, right? But if you move the y off, this just means the derivative with respect to x, right? So this means the derivative with respect to x. And then of y. And then it's of y, right? But you can put it together and say the derivative of y with respect to x. But the important part is the derivative notation itself is you should think of it like this. And what does that mean? When you say d dx, the x is representing, this means the independent variable is x. Right? Now what that means is that anything that is not just x Anything that's not a constant can be thought of as an inside function. So when I gave you the rules, I gave you the rules with x's. So I want you to, to realize that there's a very big difference between me asking you what is the derivative of x cubed versus what is the derivative of something else cubed. Right? These two things are different to you, right? Why? Because the, 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 the thing in play is not just an x. There's something other than an x. What that basically means is that whenever I'm doing the derivative of this, I just apply the power rule pretty much verbatim as written. This guy requires something a little bit more sophisticated because the base is not just x. The base is something else. Now, whenever the base is anything else, you would have to do what we call the chain rule, where you for a second, you pretend that it's just like an x, and you differentiate around it. You get three other things squared, three other things squared. But it's not just x. So what you have to do is you have to correct for that by multiplying by the derivative of that thing. Right? So you can have the rules whenever x is in the place of a rule. You just follow the rule pretty much exactly as it's written, like verbatim. Right? However, you can have something that looks almost like a rule. 
it's, some, it's clearly something cubed, and I know how to deal with a cubed, but I know how to deal with a cube of just x. I don't know how to deal with a cube of something more complicated than that. How you deal with that is the chain rule. Differentiate around it, but you always have to remember you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. There's an extra piece when it's not just x. And that is suggested to you by the little symbol here. This tells you that x is the unit, the, that's the basic element. That's the guy when you differentiate, you don't have to do anything extra. Any other thing, you have to do something extra. There's a next step that you have to follow up with, which is multiplying by its derivative of the inside. Okay? And so in the same way, if I ask you what is the derivative with respect to x of y cubed, this is telling you x is the independent variable. That's the guy where you can apply the rule verbatim. Everyone else needs the chain rule. Y is not x. So y does not fall in this category, it falls in that category. It's like something that's not the x. So what I have to do is I would have to differentiate around it and then multiply by its derivative because it's not that. And it doesn't matter. I, I could say, what is the derivative with respect to x of z to the fourth? Now you might ask, what z? What is z? I don't know, but it is not x. That's all I know. Which means it does not fall in this category. It falls in that category. When I'm differentiating it, I need to do something extra. What is the extra thing? Multiply by its derivative. So I'm going to do 4z cubed times z prime. I can say, OK, here's a derivative with respect to x. That's your independent variable up smiley face cubed. What does smiley face mean? It does not matter, I just know it's not x. I'm going to differentiate around it and multiply by its derivative. Whenever I'm looking at something that's not just x, that's how it's done. That's the chain rule. Right? And it doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in, as long as you're differentiating something that's not just x, you have to multiply by the prime. So if I do something like this. Okay, what is the derivative of, you know, x cubed times y to the fifth? And I want you to differentiate that expression. Okay, well I understand, oh, that's just really the product rule, because I have two things multiplying. Call this my f, call that my g. So this is f prime times g plus f times g prime. The rules are always in play, right? You always have to be thinking about the rules. Okay, so now I need to go into pieces. What is f prime? Well, that's the derivative of x cubed. 3x squared. It's just an x. Apply the power rule verbatim. Times the g, y to the fifth, plus f, which is x cubed. Now, when I decide that I want to find g prime, I'm going to look at what the g looks like, and hey, that's not x. What is y? I don't know, and I don't really care. I just know it's not x. If it's not x, there's an extra step for me to do after taking the derivative. I need to multiply by the prime. So at first, I'm just going to imagine that it's, some, it's just the variable, and I'm going to do the power rule around it, 5y to the fourth. But then it's like, oh, it's not just x. I need to do something extra. Are we getting it now? Yeah. So whenever you, someone tells you find the derivative or find the derivative with respect to x, x is the guy that you can just apply the rule as written. You don't have to do anything else. Everyone else, you have to do what we call the chain rule. That's, there's this little bit extra that you have to account for the fact that it's not just an x. Right? So you differentiate around it and you, you do that. And it, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter what this thing looks like. So I don't, the problem that you'll see, it'll have x's and y's, but honestly, it does not matter. Like I could put x's and z's, or x's, x squared times q cubed, right? And I apply the same principle. First, I'll just notice that, that is the product group because there are two things being multiplied, the x squared times the q cubed. So 
I'm going to think of this as my f, that is my g. I know the derivative should be f prime times g plus f times g prime. What is f prime? That's just x squared, that's 2x. g, leave it alone, that's q cubed. Plus f is x squared, g prime. Oh, that's the cube of something, so but it's not just x. So it's 3 cubed. 3 q squared <coughs> q prime. Sorry, times q prime. Q prime. Okay. So you take a derivative times the so the, the idea behind implicit differentiation is this. You're going to be given a formula that you need to find the derivative. Now it's going to be complicated. It's going to have x's mixed with other things. And the trick is, just go through and differentiate using the rules as usual. But whenever you differentiate something that's not just x, multiply by the prime. That's the only thing that changes. 2x squared times 4 times 8 times x squared. So... Let's look at some situations. So that's implicit differentiation. That's, that's all it is. It, it's just this, it's just a differentiation that says, oh, just apply the chain rule whenever you don't see an x. The difference is these things might be mixed up with the x's. So here's how you would apply it. Let's start out with a, a simple example. Which at this point is an example four. So now, here's the question. For, for all of these examples, this is going to be the question. Find dy dx. Okay, that's what we're doing. Okay, now here's the first problem. Okay, if I tell you that x times y equals 1, I would like you to find dy dx. How would you, how would you do that problem? Y equals to one. Yeah, so when it equals to one. So it'd be so it'd be no, because y is a function. That would be one. It says x y equals to one. Yeah, x y equals one is the equation. Okay, so let me ask you a question. If you were to do this without implicit differentiation, could you do it? Like if I told you that, oh, you don't need implicit differentiation. What would you have? I would have said it equal to zero. What no, but I can't. Right? That's not a thing. Did you like the, uh, the, what we just did, but at the end, um, plug in one for x? Or set it equal to one? So here's something, like without implicit differentiation. All right, we're going to do what we just did. I want you to do it both ways because I want you to compare them. Let's say, like, without implicit differentiation. I gave you that, I want you to find dy dx. How would you have done it? So this means you have to do explicit differentiation, right? So that's the rule where you have y equals some function of x. Could you actually rewrite this to look in that form? You can divide by x. Right? So me asking you to find the dy dx here is the same as me asking you to find dy dx here. Right? It turns out your y is actually 1 over x. And now you can notice that I can actually do this because I know my x is not 0. How do I know my x is not 0? Because that side is 1. If I was multiplying by 0, that side would have been 0. So I know my x is not 0, I can divide by it. So this function is just, a, this equation is just another way of rewriting this function. Now, how would you actually find the derivative here? Well, we've done this several times before. That's minus yeah. 1 over x squared. And that, that would be it. Now, now let's, let's, let me show you what, how you would do it with implicit differentiation. So 
so you, you understand the difference between the two. So if I had this guy here, x, y equals 1, here my x's and y's are jumbled up, but I didn't see the fact that I could solve for y and just find the derivative. Okay. Here's how you do You would differentiate both sides of the equation. So if this is equal to that, then the slope of this must be the slope of that. They're the same function. So I'm going to differentiate the left side. I'm going to differentiate the right side. Now, based on what we were doing before, how would you find the derivative of this? So it will be x times It's the product rule. It's the product rule. Yeah. So it will be x times y. No, the derivative of x. Of x is y. Okay, so which, choose which one you want to differentiate first. It doesn't matter what makes it. So the derivative of x. Okay, derivative of x times y, y plus, plus x, x times y prime. Times y prime. Equals, what's the derivative of 1? Which is nothing. There's zero. 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 The derivative of constant is 0. So that would be your first step. So. You wouldn't worry about what is what, can I solve for what? No, if you're doing implicit differentiation, you just go indiscriminately differentiate everybody. Differentiate left side, differentiate right, differentiate everybody. Now, the fact that your x is mixed up with y doesn't matter to you. It's just the application of the product rule in the chain. That's what it would look like. However, the question was to find dy dx. Now, we know dy dx is another way to write what? dy prime. So if someone tells me, find dy dx, they're asking me to find the derivative of y. And look here, there's a y prime right there. So when you move it all to the other side. Yeah, solve it just like a regular equation. Let's, oh, you asked me to find y prime, let me just actually find y prime. I'll just solve for it right here. So what I would do is move this to the other side. So it would be negative x minus y. This is minus y. Then I would divide. Oh, oh. So y prime would be minus y divided by x. And I would say that's the answer. Now, question that you might answer, you might ask, are these the same? Because we know the answer should be minus y, minus 1 over x squared. Why does this say minus y over x? Does it even make sense to write that? Um, it, it's x, y equals to 1, and if there's a negative, I would assume that... These two answers, how would you know they're the same? Are they the same? Is this one wrong? Is that, Is that one right? They're the same. Like, how would you know that what minus y over x is? What is y? Well, it turns out in this case, we can actually know what y is pretty easily, right? Y is actually 1 over x. It's easy to solve for it. So I can literally just plug that in. It's 1 over x, right? So the y here, I can replace it with 1 over x over x. And notice that I, again, get 1 over x squared. So this is actually exactly the same as that, right? It's just that the y, in this situation, whoever wrote the answer this way, they, they don't know what y is. They didn't take the time to solve for it. Okay, so they express the answer with the y in the answer, which is fine because you're, you're supposed to find y prime. So as long as there's no y prime on the other side, you're fine. Having no y in your answer is okay. Right? Now, if someone took the time to actually solve for the y and plug it in, they'd realize that, oh, you would get the same answer. So it's just two perspectives. One is the case where, oh, I can solve for y and just do the rules all the way I normally do it. The other perspective is, I'm not going to waste time solving for y. Let me just differentiate both sides and solve for y prime. Now, at this point, you might have the idea that, so are you telling me implicit differentiation is optional? Like, I could just do it the regular way all the time? OK, let's move on to the second example. <coughs> oh, I have a question. Yes. So d over dx will always equal dy over dx, pretty much? No. D, d over dx is something that cannot exist by itself. It has to operate on something. 
you have to put something in. Yeah. Right? So you can almost think of it like a function. It's kind of like me saying f of something. And you have to tell me what that something is. So I can say f of x, and it knows, oh, do this. And if I say f of 2, it will, oh, do this. It will do something else. d dx means take the derivative with respect to x. Now, if someone puts a function in there, y, it goes through the rule based on what y looks like. So dy dx means I'm performing a derivative rule on y. With respect to x. With respect to x. And that with respect to x, what that, how you want to think about what with respect to x means is x is the only guy you don't have to do the chain rule for. Everything else, you need the chain rule. So if I see an x squared, 2x. If I see anything else squared, it's 2 times that thing times the derivative. So this is y. So what would you do for this? This is y. Um, so when you, say, when, when you say something like dy dx, it's really saying take the derivative with respect to x of something called y. It's like you're plugging the y inside of it. But they just do this as a shorthand. Everyone to oh, dy dx. So, okay, so you might think, okay, implicit differentiation optional. Because here's an example, yeah, we could do what I was showing you before, but we could also not do it. And so you'd be like, why, why are we learning this? You said okay. this is not really on the final. Right? It's definitely on the final. It's, yeah. just, it's, just, it's just not as pervasive. It would like be one problem. Worst case scenario, two problems, but it's definitely coming. Um, it's definitely coming. Definitely. Um, let's, look at, let's look at the second example. So here they told us, find, again, find y prime. But here is the expression. Now that's more the level of a difficulty that you'd see on a final. Um, maybe slightly more difficult, but not much. That's pretty a pretty solid kind of. Uh, so you just take the derivative of that side and that side. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I do want you to appreciate that we could actually do it the old way as well. There is a way to solve for y here. Um, Divided by. Oh no, you can't do that. No. Um, so uh, we could actually do this the old way. Now, I claim that you're not going to want to do it that way. <laughs> so here, here's how you would do it. Um, I would bring everything to one side. And now, does this remind you of anything? Can you see what kind of expression would you all that. What kind of expression would you call that? Or if I told you to solve for y, what would you kind of think? Does it remind you of anything? No. Remind you of nothing? <laughs> See something? I see what's going on. They all have x's. Sure, they all have x's. But I put parentheses around the x's because I want to be extra suggestive of something. I can do the problem. Huh? <laughs> Does it remind you of anything? Let me do it a different way. Let me go through and replace all everything in parentheses with just a letter. Oh wait, that's the, that's the, the chain rule. No, it's not. It's not derivative. We're not differentiating. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I'm just going to go through and everything that I put in the black parentheses, I'm going to write a letter in this position. Reminds you of anything? Yes. yes. It's a quadratic. That's what I literally said, but I didn't want to say it because I was a... Well, why did you say it? I thought no, wrong. you need to I say it. Was wrong. It doesn't matter. Like, to find out that you're wrong, here's where you want to do it. <laughs> right? Like, you don't want to go on a test and do the wrong thing and like, oh, I guess I was wrong. No. In class is when you need to say it and you need to find out, hey, it's wrong, so you know when I'm on the test, don't do that. <laughs> That's what I'm like, just saying. Whether you're right or wrong, I don't want you guys to think of, oh, I need to say the right answer. I don't care that you say the right answer. I want you to talk to me so I know what you're thinking. So if it's right, I can say, oh, that's right. If it's wrong, I, can, I know, oh, here's an issue that they don't understand. Let me explain it. Right? So don't say something when you think you have the right answer. Just say what you're thinking. Right? If, you, if you have an idea, tell me your idea. Whether it's right or wrong doesn't matter. I'd rather you tell me something wrong and we fix it now than you having that wrong thought and go on an exam and write it down. Right, because then it matters that you're wrong. Here it's not gonna matter. Right? Here I'm gonna help you fix it. So it's actually a quadratic in disguise. And and by the way, this kind of skill, I'll just mention it here. When it comes to classes like algebra, pre-calc, calc one, cal two, cal three, all that stuff, this kind of skill is an important skill to master. The idea so that like you can see the forms of things. That's why when you learn a rule. Basically what you're learning that rule as, it's like a template that you want to fit on top of something else. Right? So that's kind of like how, that's how you'd recognize, for example, that that thing in the test was not a power rule. Because you recognize the power rule as, the, it's, it's a kind of a form. And things can look very different, right? I can have, I can have x squared, or I can have x cube or I can have x to the 17.9. I can have, there are places in this formula where changes can happen. But as long as they happen in a certain position, the form as a whole should remind me of something else. So I know if I'm looking at any one of these, oh, that's power rule. The moment I look at that, oh, not power rule, right? None of these look exactly like that, but that doesn't matter. You have to understand the rule in terms of the form. You want to think of it as a template. You should just know if you have something squared, something, and you don't have it there, you have a bunch of things, that's quadratic. That's what a quadratic looks like. AX squared plus BX plus C. The X is squared in one term. You just have an X in the other term. You have no X's in the third term. Anything of that form is quadratic to you. So it turns out you can actually think of this as a quadratic, and then you can use some rule with quadratic to solve it. Now this obviously looks, it's very hard to factor, but we also know about the quadratic formula that can help me even if I can factor. So one way I could solve for y here is I could just use the quadratic formula. I see this, and to someone who doesn't really know what to look for, they give up. They just leave it blank on the test. But if you know what to look for, and you know what a quadratic looks like, you're going to be like, it's a quadratic. So the quadratic says, the quadratic formula says, if you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then you can solve for the value. In this case, the x is like your y over here. By taking the thing in front of the linear term, so minus it, plus or minus the square root, square that guy, minus, minus 4, four times the first part, c times the last part, two a. all over 2 times the first part. Apply that rule here, and it's going to look like this. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times the first part times the last part all over 2 times the first part. So you could actually solve for y here using the quadratic formula. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I gave you this as on, a, on an exam, and I asked you to find y prime, and you don't know about implicit differentiation. You know about the whole way so of doing that's, this. So it's not finished. Okay? It's not finished because you have to find the derivative of that. Right? So you might be like, you know what? Forget it. Can I just cancel stuff out? 
you can't cancel. Oh. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, you can't cancel. But how would you differentiate this? What would be involved in this derivative? The quotient rule, right? Oh, this is so long. And then this would be like, oh my god, I'm going to have to do the chain rule like on would, that. I feel it's like I like, would just cross chain. stuff out. You would start, yeah, you'd start, you panic, and your higher brain functions that tells you you can't cancel across sums would forget that. <laughs> and then you'd start canceling, which would be very wrong, and Joanna would be very shit. Very <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is why it's good that you just said to me that that's what I'm thinking, so I can tell you stop thinking that. There's a plus or a minus sign that will not ever be the right thing to do. Okay. That, so I know I'm going to do that stupid Don't mistake. do it. Don't do it. So now the thing is, I could solve for y like I could do here and just find the derivative. I don't feel like taking the derivative of that. No. That's that's gonna take me the entire test. So now to we do gotta do the other problem. way now. So <laughs> technically, I could do it the old way, but uh, hell no, I'm not gonna do it this way. So um, try the implicit way. So so now, what would I? How would I find it the implicit way? So it's more than just optional. Sometimes, even when you can do it the old way, you don't want to because it's way too complicated. However, if I just go through now and apply implicit differentiation, just differentiate the left and right side separately, I'm not saying it's going to look extremely pretty, but it's going to be a heck of a lot better than that. Um, so if I apply implicit differentiation, What is that going to look like? So, be so now I'm going to differentiate this. So now I have to think, how do you differentiate that? So it will be 4, four x one. Four x one. Okay, so here's that. No. Mm -hmm. And two. Uh, so you differentiate the whole equation first. Yeah. Okay, so 2, 2y. Mm -hmm. uh, Two, two, and then just write two y beside. Why do you multiply? Because they're multiplied by two. Multiply by two y. Wait. So what's your f of x and what's your g of x? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what you need to be thinking. Like, what is the rule? Okay. So this is another thing uh, that you guys should scribble this in your notes. When you're attacking a problem, a math problem, you always attack from the outside in, right? So it seems like a lot of you just look at the inner functions and the details and oh, there's a square here and there's a... No, you want to look globally first. So you want to look at this thing as a whole. And when you look at it as a whole, you're going to realize, oh, there are two things being multiplied. So now you're going to think product rule. That should be the first thought. Don't worry about, oh, this is a square and that's a cube. No, that's, that's after. Look at the entire problem and realize, oh, this in general is a quadratic, or this in general is something I would use the power rule, or this in general is something I would use the product rule. From the outside looking in, take a global view of what you're looking at, right? So if I want to differentiate this term, wait, I just look at it we... overall, what rule would I so need wait, to use? Wait, um... So now I realize the product rule, and I would think of this as the f and that as the g. Oops. Would it be two times Right? So that's your first thought. Don't get into the details and start writing stuff down. First, choose a strategy. You need to choose the appropriate strategy. That's the first thought. So product rule. Okay, so now that I know the product rule is what I'm doing, right? So in my head, I know the next thing I need to write down is f prime times g plus f times g prime. Okay, so what are we going to get? Uh, 2 times y squared plus x Time, no, 2x. 2x. F is 2x. Yeah, times 2y. Times 2y. Y prime. Right. So you need I've the chain rule here because so it's not just an x. So that's the product rule with the first thing. Plus. So that's the product rule for the first term. <coughs> So that's the derivative of this. Now you move on to this. And again, first you look global. 
oh, it's two things multiplying. I have a 7x times a y. So I'm going to do the product rule so on that. Seven seven times times so it's 7 times y. So it's 7 times y. Plus x times y prime. 7x okay. times y prime. Yeah. I kept missing and this stuff. You keep so forgetting the constants yeah. in front. So I would always yes. put the constant at the end. Yeah, because 7x seven is, seven is the f. Right, that's what I'm thinking of as the f. Oh, okay. And then I'm thinking of the y as the g. So the derivative of f is 7, and f itself is 7x. So y times f. Okay. So things like that are, are things that you guys should be noticing. So whenever I'm, I'm doing a problem and you tell me something and it's the wrong answer, what you should be writing in your notebook now is you should have a personal note to yourself saying, oh, remember not to make this mistake. Right? So it's not like you just copy exactly what I copy off the board. Understand, right? first you give me feedback on what you're thinking. I give you feedback whether that's right or wrong. And then all of you, your notes should all look different. Because the diff different people are going to make different mistakes. Right? If I look in all your notebooks and it's exactly what I'm writing on the board, you're not taking notes correctly. Right? You need to be writing your own notes. You need to tell me your idea and I'll tell you, okay, fix this. Oh, that's right or that's wrong. And you make a note to yourself. Okay, make sure you don't do this. Different people, in general, the, the kinds of mistakes you guys will make as a class are, are the same mistakes that I've seen a thousand times. But different individuals will make different mistakes in there. And you need to write your notes <laughs> to cater to your specific mistakes. And the thing is, sometimes you don't know what your specific mistakes are, so you need to tell me what you're thinking. Wait. Hey, Javon, this is what I do. And then I'm like, yeah, no, you want to fix this. Or no, that's completely wrong. Never do that. Or OK, yeah, you're right, so you're OK. Then in that situation, if I just say, yeah, you're right, you can copy exactly what I write down. But if I say, no, you're wrong, that's time for you to write in your margins, hey, make sure you don't make this mistake because of this. Yeah. So for constants, how would we write that in the... Like, constants where? <coughs> like, if you just have a constant by itself, the derivative is zero. No, I mean like, you know, like the plus C, like, <coughs> well, we're going to do, you're going to do that. <coughs> I, was gonna, I don't know how we should differentiate that. Oh, the, second, the last one. Yeah. But that's just like you differentiate normally? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. We're, in general, we're differentiating normally. It's just that we apply the chain rule when we should. Okay, so how... Right, so this here is the, the product rule for the second one. Product rule for the second term. <coughs> okay, so that deals with the second term. Now you move on to the third one. Now I look at this, and how would I differentiate that? <coughs> Well, that's a straight up power rule, right? So the three comes down, multiplies the two, that's left with a square. And I don't have to multiply that x prime or anything because it's dy dx. <coughs> the x is the guy that I don't have to do anything extra. Equals, turn over four, now that's zero because that's a concept, that's the rule. So again, you go through and differentiate both sides, but remember, all your derivative rules are still in play. You still have to obey the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, all of that. So you have to, once you look at it globally and you just realize that, oh, it's something times something, it's something divided by something, or it's something plugged inside of something. That's how you want to look at it overall. You worry about the details afterwards. You first need to choose the strategy. You first need to know, oh, I should be doing product rule, or I should be doing quotient rule, or I should be doing chain rule. That's the first thought you need to have. Figure out what strategy do I need to employ. And that it's based on how the things look. Then you go into specifics afterwards. Okay? So you needed product rule for the first two terms. You didn't need it here and here. Okay. So here we differentiated both sides, but that's not, we're not done. We were asked to find the derivative, find y prime. So now what you'd realize is this is just an equation with y primes in it. I want to actually now find. I want to find the y prime. Which in this case ends up being in two locations. Can we split that? So how do you solve the, an equation like that? Can I split the like, no, no, no. Split what? To make it shorter way? I'm not sure. You just multiply it? Multiply what? 
both of those? Why prime? So if we why would you multiply? Combine. Basics. Like this is like solving equations now. We're in algebra territory. The calculus has been done. We're in algebra territory. We just want to solve this <coughs> for y prime. So if you want to solve for something, uh, how do you do it? You we set should... it equal. You set it what? No. So you want to get, you want to get rid of everything from. That's where you want to end up. You want to be able to say y prime equals blah. So, so if I'm in this situation, how do I get to that? So subtract everything except the y prime. Right. Whenever you want to solve for something in an equation, you need to isolate that thing, which means everything that does not have that thing, move it to the other side. That's the first step. This doesn't have a y prime, that doesn't have a y prime, that doesn't have a y prime. So get rid of it. That's the first step. Um, so on the other side of the equal sign, I'm going to move <coughs> this guy over there. It becomes a minus 2y squared. Move this guy over there. That's a minus 7x. Move this guy over there. Wait, isn't it 7y? 7y. Move this guy over there. That's a minus 6x six six squared. Okay. So now on this side, um, let me simplify this a little bit. This is 4xy plus 7xy prime. Okay, so this is from here. So this, I just simplify it. Now remember the goal. I need to find this guy. Now in this situation, what would I do? Uh, you would, um, since it's the multiplication, you would combine the divide terms. How would you do that? You can think of it as combining like terms. There's probably a better way to think about it, though, psychologically. So would you? <coughs> what would you do here? <coughs> we want to f solve for this guy in green. You, you, di you, di you divide. Divide by what? Can we factor by it out? Factor, <laughs> factor it out. It's a common term. <coughs> Wait, what? Common terms. What? You guys are thinking too complicated. <coughs> it's a common term. Factor it out. Okay. I still want to solve for this guy. How do I solve for it now? <coughs> now we can divide both sides by this thing. The calculus happened here, where you just, okay, apply the product rule, product rule, where you're applying the chain rule, and now it's just a matter of isolating the guy that you want. Everyone that doesn't have him, bring it to the other side, factor out the thing that you want to solve for, then divide by that thing. That's in general how you would solve a random equation. Right, so that would actually be the answer. And the answer would be expressed like this. They'll, they'll, this will be one of the answer choices, or you should write your answers here. And if you wanted to know what the answer would look like in just x's, you can imagine taking this entire thing and putting it here and here and here. And, you'll get this here. And, and that, by the way, once you do that, you can imagine what it would have been like to have done the quotient rule like this guy. You have gotten this thing. Yeah, forget it. Like, it's not. This is much nicer. So remember your algebra a little bit. Um, but that that's, that's going to be, that, that would be the answer. However, there is still one more situation. So here's a case where I could have done it the old way, but I wouldn't want to because it would be super complicated. So I did it in implicit differentiation. And so. If you look at the third example, though,
Oh, I, I didn't put the day example that I, I wanted to. Oh, no, I did. Okay. I, I just was looking at here. Okay. So again, it's find y prime. So this is x squared plus y to the 7 minus 2y equals 3. So what would this look like if we tried to do it the first way? So you mean that's the quadratic? It's not quadratic because it's oh, the power yes. of 7. Okay. Um, pretty much a quadratic, you think quadratic when you have something lined up kind of like this. We have something that's not the variable you care about. You have the variable to the square plus something that's not doesn't have the variable you care about times the variable plus something that doesn't have the variable equals 0. And you can also think of a quadratic when all the powers are kind of <laughs> in this um, proportionally in this fashion, so 2n to the n. So, for example, what I'm saying is something like this, x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 equals 0, you can think of that as a quadratic. Because the powers, they double. The one, the highest power is double the next highest power, and then the third term doesn't have the power. That's, again, a quadratic form. So, this is 7, right? There, there's no way that's, that's a quadratic. So you might say, okay, let's try to solve a y. And you guys might wrestle with it a little bit, but let me save you a little bit of time. It's impossible to solve for y in this case. And I mean that literally. I don't mean it's hard. I don't mean it'll take a long time. I don't mean, oh, only the calculator can do it. I mean, no, one, it's impossible. It's quite literally impossible to isolate the y. There's no way to actually solve for y here. It turns out that there's a, there's a theorem that says, if you're looking at a polynomial with degree 5 or higher, there is no general formula. So there's no quadratic formula for something that has fifth degree or higher. Right? There's no equivalent. You have formulas for cubics and for the fourth powers and all that stuff. They get a lot more complicated, but there are general formulas for it. Anything higher than that, there is no general formula, and a lot of times, there is no way to actually write down the formulas in the math that we know. It's just like there's, you can't do it. So at this point, implicit differentiation is the only game in town. It's something that you have to know it for this. Like there's no other way. <laughs> So don't think of this as something optional. Um, it's something that you should use whenever you can because nor usually it's going to be a lot easier than doing it the original way. And sometimes you can't do it the original way. Let's do implicit differentiation. So here, okay, let's see what we have learned here. So I want to differentiate both sides. Let's move on. What, what would this look like? Differentiate the derivative of x squared. 2x. 2x plus the derivative of y to the 7. This one you have to do the chain rule because of y. Yeah. So it would be 7y to the 6 times y prime. Correct. This one? <coughs> so minus 2 y y prime. No. How do you do this? Minus 2y prime. Minus 2y prime. The derivative of y is just y prime. Okay. <laughs> right? Even if you think of it as, um, even if you think of it as like an inside function, like y by itself, raised to the 1 power, the power rule says that you bring the 1 down and then subtract 1 from the power, then multiply by the derivative. This guy will give you 1 anyway. So it just ends up looking like y prime. So the derivative of y, you can just think of it as y prime. And then over here, the 3, the derivative of that is 0. Now we realize that I want to find y prime, so now it's just a matter of algebra. Here's something that I want in an equation that I want to solve for. The goal is to isolate that thing. Move everything that doesn't have it to one side. Factor it out from the other side. Divide by the thing. That's always going to be the strategy. So. 
And again, you might be looking at something and it looks very complicated, but once you have that strategy in your head, you're gonna you're gonna make it, you're gonna find your way through the problem. You're just gonna know, okay, anything that doesn't have it, move it over there. It's a common term now, factor it out. Whatever is in leftover in parentheses, put it in the bottom, right? That's how you wanna think of it. Right? You don't wanna get, oh my god, this function looks complicated, I'm not sure what to do. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Right? There's the, the there's a strategy that will work for every situation you're in. And you want to think in terms of strategies, in terms of the general forms. Okay, something times something, I want to find the root, it's product proof. It doesn't matter what the things look like, it's product proof. So this doesn't have the y prime, I'm going to move it to the other side, so over here it's going to be minus 2x. And then you factor out the y prime. These y prime is a common factor, if I factor it out I get 7y, y to the 6 minus 2. Then divide it. And then I can divide both sides by that. <coughs> Now, it's impossible to actually solve for y, but finding the derivative is pretty easy with the, the in, implicit differentiation. So implicit differentiation, uh, super important. Every now and then, they put on a, 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 a mean problem for you, where they have you do an implicit differentiation, and then they ask you a tangent line problem. So let's actually look at an example like that. Or maybe let's look at a couple. So the, in the above, find the equation of the tangent line. at the point two comma one. Okay, so sometimes they throw that in. A lot of times they'll just give you some formula and say, oh, find y prime. You know you have to use implicit differentiation to find y prime. Ever so often, they'll give you a formula and then they'll ask you to find the tangent line. And it's, it's one of those cases where your x's and y's are mixed together. Okay, so how would you do this one? So you do the, you find the slope? The you need to find the slope, right? So at this point, here's what you should be thinking, right? The tangent line is just a line, like any other regular line, right? It's y equals <laughs> mx plus b. What makes it a tangent line specifically? It's the where it's at. Uh, it the, runs to the, the M comes from the derivative <coughs> of Y evaluated at, at the point. Evaluated at the point. Right? That's what makes a line a tangent line. So whenever you see the phrase tangent line, don't be confused by that. It's just a straight line. The only difference is what makes it a special line is that the m comes from the derivative. Okay, so that's all. So here, now we know to find a line, we just need a point on the line and the slope. Now the tangent line tells us where to find the slope at the derivative, and we already have the point. Now in part c, we also found the slope. y prime, remember, represents slope. <coughs> So now let's put it all together. So let's say I want to find the equation of the line. What do I need for the line? I need the point and the slope. So I already have the point, right? The point is x1 comma y1. I'm going to think of that as 2 comma 1. Now I want the slope. To find the slope, you need to plug in x and y. Right. It's going to be the derivative evaluated at that point. I'm going to plug in 2 for x and 1 for uh -huh. y in that formula. So it'll be 1 equals to? Minus Wait, oh, you're doing that 2 for x. Oh, be... It's 2 times oh, 2 okay. over 7 times 1 to the 6, six minus, minus two. 2. So this would give me minus 4 over 5. five. And that's my m. So that's my point. 
and that's my m. So this means the tangent line is what? It's y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Because it's just a normal line. The difference is the slope comes from the derivative. So I'm going to plug this over here. I'm going to put 2 right here. I'm going to put 1 right here. It depends. Like <coughs> on a written test, like on one of my tests, that's perfectly acceptable as an answer. On the on the on like the final where there are multiple choice, they might solve for the y. But again, again, that shouldn't be too much problem if you have to do that. So or there are times when in the multiple choice problem they actually write it in this form. But if they write it in mx plus b form, just expand the parentheses. That's minus 4 over 5x plus 8 over 5. And then solve for y by adding 1 to both sides. So y is equal to minus 4 over 5x plus 8 over 5 plus 1. But the 1 you think of as 5 over 5. And so that's minus 4 over 5x plus 13 over 5. And if they write it in y equals mx plus b form, that would be the answer. In the, in the recitation, I actually want to go over the test with you guys, so we'll take a break and we'll go over the test. And, and I'll talk about what we want to do later. Um, but um, what I want you to do now is learn, know how to do implicit differentiation with your calculator, because your calculator really there not knows how to do implicit differentiation. So in the off chance, this usually comes in part one, but in the off chance, every now and then, very rarely, but it happens, they throw this in part two. I want you to know how to use your calculator to do implicit differentiation. And there's there's something, there's a, a situation where students often make a mistake. So I want to mention that specifically. So you can write this down. We're going to do it on our calculator, though. So here's the example. So we'll do on calculator. So let's say they told you this, x plus 5y cubed equals 6xy. Find y prime. And maybe I can do something else. Well, here I, I, I had you guys do something else that they probably wouldn't ask you, so let me just get off the plate, I suppose. <laughs> so, find, so this is A, B, find the slope of the tangent line. And we're not quite done with derivatives, but in terms of all the technical rules you need to know, this is the last part. Um, the next thing we'll do with derivatives will, is some application stuff, like assuming you know how to find a derivative applied to these situations. Um, but yeah, so write that down. We're actually going to do this one on the calculator. 
power of the calculator. And it's using an old command, but there's a there's one way you kind of have to write things down that's going to be very important. Again, the, the steps to how to do it in the calculator, I, I already wrote that down, so you have you don't really have to write the notes for that. But just make sure that you can actually physically um, do it on your calculator, and you're not making a mistake or making a, a syntactical error. I thought the top of the calculator was cut off, but I think it's okay now. Okay. Okay. So, step one is always turn the calculator on. Okay. So remember the equation. It is x plus five y cubed and equals six x y. And I want to find y prime in that. So. Similarly, we're going to actually use the differentiation command. So you're going to calculate, calculate F3, calculate. You're going to click differentiate, just as you would almost with a, with a normal differentiation situation. OK, so you enter. So now you have D, open parentheses. OK, now here's how you're going to type it. You are going to type the entire equation here. You're going to type out the equation. Now, this part is very important that I'm about to tell you. If you type it out and you just type y where you see y, you will confuse the calculator because it, it, it's going to think you're in calc 3, right? How you need to tell it that, oh, we're in calc 1, and when I say y, I really mean a function of x. I don't mean a, an entirely separate variable measuring something else. Um, you literally have to type out y of x, right? So everywhere you see y, you're going to type y of x. So let, let me show you how you're going to type it out. Okay. And that's, that's very important, because if you don't do this, it, the calculator is going to give you the wrong answer. Okay. So here, it's, it's, uh, it's x plus 5y cubed. I, I shouldn't write 5y cubed. So I'm going to write x plus 5. Now, I'm going to open parentheses where the y should be. I'm not going to type y alone. I'm going to type y of x y, parentheses, x, parentheses, close parentheses, cubed. Okay. Now, if you don't type y of x, the calculator is going to think y is just some other variable me measuring some other thing. By you typing y of x, it's going to understand, oh, you're thinking of y as a function of x. Got it. Right. So if you actually wanted y times x, you could put the asterisk here, or you could just type x, y, and it'll think of it as multiplication. But when you type parentheses here, um, it's going to know, oh, you're thinking of y as a function of x, and then it's going to actually do implicit differentiation. So I have x plus 5y of x cubed. <coughs> and that's equal to, equal to, now again, this is going to be 6 times y of x times x. So we all put 6x? Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I put the y in, in front. OK, so I want to write 6xy, but I can't just write y. I have to write y of x. That's very important. So you don't put the parentheses before the y for this one? I could. I could. Let's just, let's just do that, just to be consistent here. So where it, whenever you're doing implicit differentiation, just open the parentheses where you have the y and type y of x inside instead. Oh, you erase the x though. Yeah, I'm going to put it back. OK? OK, so 
you're going to type out the entire equation, the very important distinction, and I'm going to say this again. You can't just type y. You need to type y of x. Right? Your, your calculator is not going to interpret that as y is a function of x otherwise. So F3 calculate, choose differentiate. It's going to open D, open parentheses, type the entire equation with the caveat that every ACLY type y of x instead. Then you're going to comma and press X and then close parentheses. And then you press enter. And so now what your calculator did, and you can even look at this in, um, do this by hand and see what it's going to look like. So it's a little bit complicated to read it off the screen, but I'm, I'm going to show you how to read it. So here it told you, oh, it's 15 y of x squared times d dx of y plus 1. Right? So let me explain what it's doing. First of all, the derivative of x is what? One. 1, right? That's the 1 that's right here. <coughs> this part did what? It actually did the chain rule. You see, it took that 3, multiplied the 5, it got 15. So it got 15y squared, and then it multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Right, so this part here represents your y prime. So it's actually going it's, to, it's not going to write y prime. I don't know why they didn't put that notation in. But it's not going to write y prime, it's going to write d dx of y. But you just know, when you read that on the screen, that's your y prime. It literally did the chain rule here. 15y squared, that's this part, times y prime plus 1. Then if you move to the side. I have a question. Uh, yeah. So you know when you do the limit, like if you were to just plug into calculator, how do you do limit x like approaching to this number? How do you plug that into the calculator? Um, just don't worry well, about that. Well, that's a di no, you should know how to do that. But that's a different situation okay. than what we're doing here. Um, know this, and then you can ask me that afterwards. OK. so. This is saying 15y squared y prime plus 1 equals, and if you, you can scroll across to the other side, and you see that it says, OK, that's 6y prime times x plus 6y times x prime, which is 1. So it actually did the product for me, right? So the thing is, when it's written out like that, it's going to look a little bit clumsy. But what you should do is you should write on your paper, write out the answer. So here I would go and I would write out what it told me on the calculator. So I'm realizing what it just told me was 15y squared y prime plus 1 equals, I don't know if this is going to fit, it's not going to fit, right? You guys will know, people, anyone watching the video, we have to worry about themselves. Okay, so 15y squared y prime plus 1 equals, it gave us 6y uh, prime times x plus 6y. Right? So that's what it actually wrote up. Okay. So now, when you're in the calculator section, again, this equation might be very long and cumbersome, um, but you can you remember that your calculator can actually solve equations for you. So you, you would, instead of doing this by hand, because you're in the calculator section, don't waste time doing things by hand in the calculator section, um, you realize that you need to solve for the y prime in this situation. So what you're going to do now is you're going to use the solve command. So let's move back down. So now you know you need to find y prime. Uh, sorry. Uh, so you go to the algebra, F2. There's the solve command right here. That's the command that helps you solve equations. Right, so we're going to tell it to solve for the y prime. So enter. OK, so solve. Now you're going to type out the equation that your calculator gave you. OK? Now, it is highly recommended that you don't waste your time trying to figure out how to type a dy dx. Like I said, just type any other variable. Now, in your textbook, they rep recommend typing a d instead. So you're going to type out 15y squared times d 
plus 1 equals 6 D times x plus 6 y. You're going to type that up and you're going to tell it solve for D. Right? So you, they type D for derivative, but you can type pretty much any other letter you want other than x and y because they already need something. Type, replace your dy dx part of what it tells you with any other letter you want. They usually recommend D. So you're going to tell it to solve now. 15 y squared times alpha d plus 1 equals 6 times alpha d times x plus 6 y comma alpha d. Oh, when you put a comma, that means you're trying to solve. You're yeah, it tells you who you want to solve for. So you're going to type out an entire equation, comma, what you put here is the letter you want to solve for. So I'm going to type it out with a d and tell it, solve this equation for d. Right? So now you're going to tell it, and then now you press enter, and it's going to give you that equation. It's so going to give you d is equal to minus 6y minus 1 over, it factored this. I'm not sure why. Let's write it in down factor form. 6x minus 15y squared. Right? And you realize what it did. It took the 1, made it a negative, so you got the 6 y minus 1. It brought this over, factored out the y prime, and then divided by it. So you'd have a couple steps here. Um, you use the differentiation command, you type out the original equation. The difference is, instead of typing just y, type y of x. Press enter. It's going to just differentiate both sides of that equation, just like how you would do it on paper. So it'll, it's going to Everywhere it's gonna, if you would have a y prime, it's going to throw in the simple d dx of y. All you need to do now to solve for that is retype the equation, replacing that expression with a single variable, and then telling it to solve for that variable. So ultimately, this will be the answer at the end I'm of the day. I'm not getting that answer. Wait, I keep getting the... What did you type out? I typed out 15 times y. Let, let me see. Can you help me? You type out 15y squared d plus 1 equals 6 times d times x plus 6 times y plus d. Oh, did you press the green button before pressing equal? What it's doing is it's, it's putting the decimals in. Oh, OK. So you probably have it set on the setting. So this is the right answer, except it's, it's replacing all the fractions with decimals. So, so how do you do that, to put it back in the screen? So you have to remember that setting. There, there are some times where people don't like it giving them answers in fractions, so it tell, it's, there's a setting that makes it always output decimals, and it's going to write it as decimals. I forgot where that setting is. Um, I'll look it up. But I would just leave it as the original setting, and if you don't want a fraction or with radicals, you want a decimal answer, you can get that by just clicking the green sign before the equal sign. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't change a setting for that. Just in the situation where you want a, a decimal approximation, in, in set, just press the green sign before the equal sign, and it'll you give you the decimal. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so you, you, you guys probably have a general setting. And, but the thing is, in, on the, like, the final, they're going to put the answer in this form. So you probably do want the original setting there. So for, for my calculator, for example, if I were to say something like, um, 12 uh, divided by, say, 14. 
Right, you see it gives me a, a fraction as the answer, 6 over 7. It just reduces the fraction. Like the TI-89 by default usually would give you answers like that. Now, in the event that I didn't oh, want 6 yeah. over 7, I wanted a decimal, what I would have done was type 12 divided by 14. But before I press equal, I'm actually going to press the green button, then hit enter. And now it gives me the decimal answer. So the thing is, some people have their calculator set on a setting that by default it gives you the decimal answer, which is what, what is your case. Now, um, in terms of how to change that setting, I don't remember right now where the general setting is, but I can figure it out and tell you after the break. But you, you definitely want it set on, give me the exact answer by default. If you're in a situation where you want decimals, just press this before the equal sign and you get it. So I, I wouldn't set it as a default, actually. That's it for now. In terms of new material, um, we're going to talk about effective education and give you some advice on that. But we can take another break if you guys want. Very short break. Mm -hmm. Yeah.